What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a Capital Hungry educational webinar on the intro to risk management. So this is going to be a very basic presentation, hopefully short and sweet, just giving a very uh, brief introduction to risk management, where this presentation should be compounded and complemented with the other Capital Hungry educational webinars on financial psychology and various risk method, uh, very risk man various risk management methods we'll be discussing through this presentation. So there's already a bunch of educational webinars that dive into some of the topics I'm gonna be discussing in more detail, okay? So intro to risk management, Capital Hungry Market Research Group. Let's just dive right into it. So what is risk management? Risk management while day trading is the active supervision of your capital in the financial markets. The first purpose is to protect capital while trading the markets and spot out potential opportunity to enter a risk for a reward. The markets are all probabilities and based on human psychology, and the majority of profit is made during logical risk management. Risk management is where you learn to enter capital into the market, protect capital, gain profit, keep profit, manage losses, and more, such as even spot opportunity that you're potentially looking to put a risk for a potential favorable reward. Without active logical risk management, it is impossible to be a successful trader or investor, as inevitable human emotions will get exploited. Skilled trading psychology and financial risk management go hand in hand. So if you were to look at the financial market as a big ocean, the, um, a lot of economists, a lot of traders and investors do talk about the financial market as an ocean. That's why you hear so many various uh, words and terminology such as liquidity, market whales, because it talks about in relation to the ocean being so vast, so deep, so dangerous as well, but with also so much opportunity available. So let's just say you are a manual retail trader and you are entering this huge ocean with nothing just you are entering this ocean no lifeboat no raft nothing at all not even a donut to float on that is the majority of retail traders who enter the market through social media methods where they do not have realistic expectations they're told nothing about trading psychology or risk management right the number one rule when you come into the markets that traders are not told is that your first goal is not to profit. Your first goal is to learn how to float in the ocean, how to potentially make a boat and how to survive, right? Protecting your capital is goal number one. Once you have that strong foundation of understanding the risk involved in trading and in the financial markets, understanding what you are really involved in, then you can build from there to potentially be looking at opportunities to profit. So having strong trading psychology alongside a uh, very strong financial risk management, if you were to visualize yourself in a huge ocean, with has, which has plenty of opportunity, tons of various fish to catch, tons of various ways to make money, but also has tons of danger, the risk management, the psychology, that is your boat, right? The stronger risk management you have, the stronger trading psychology you have, the stronger your boat is, your ship is to navigate these financial markets, to stay afloat in this ocean that they call the markets. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you're looking at the financial markets and you're looking at manual retail traders, majority of them, they're floating in this vicious ocean with all that danger around them, with no boat, no life raft, nothing. No risk management plan, no clue about trading psychology, terrible expectations with how they get introduced to the market and asking to get swallowed up, right? <clears throat> so vision, I always talk about long-term vision. You must have goals in trading bigger than your short-term emotions. A plan must be created around these goals with the financial risk management integrated with this plan. This allows you to keep in mind that the market is all probabilities, numbers, and psychology, as well as better control emotions. 
Emotions will always be active for manual retail traders, but having a long-term vision dissected into a logical, actionable plan integrated with financial uh, risk management heavily increases your probability of success. So a lot of people have a dream. A lot of people have a vision. I want to make a lot of money. I want to be a full-time trader. I want to buy my parents a house, retire early, go on vacations and meet a bunch of women. I don't care what your goals and vision are. Whatever your driving factor is for what you want to do, it's perfectly fine to have the vision and the dream. But that dream has to be translated into actionable, executable goals in the industry you are looking to take advantage of. So let's give the example that somebody wants to be a full-time trader. The definition of full-time trader is heavily skewed within social media, but full-time trading means you sustain the quality of your life through trading. You're paying your bills, you're getting your groceries, you're living your life through trading. It doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire. It doesn't mean you have to be buying Lamborghinis. You could be making, and, and especially in North America, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 a month consistently as a trader, and you'd be considered a full-time trader because you have the means to pay your cost of living and pay your bills. If that's your goal and vision, that's perfectly fine. But you have to have realistic approach to achieve that goal. For example, you can't come into the market and say, I want to be a full-time trader. I want to make a reasonable income in the country that I live in that lines up with the cost of living and be able to support myself through trading. You can't then say, okay, if I'm in North America and my initial goal has to be around long-term $5,000 a month for me to be considered a full-time trader and pay my cost of living, you can't start with a $50 account and say, okay, well, I'm going to take this $50 to $50,000, then I'm just going to make $1,000 every week, then I'll make $5,000. No, those aren't realistic goals. Those are what I like to call social media goals. Social media goals is like when you were introduced to the markets, you had no clue about the risk management. You had no clue about the financial risk involved. Everything advertised to you is very easy. And everybody's first social media goal for the majority of us, I was a part of this as well, was as soon as we learned about trading, as soon as we were about to hop off that demo account, mom, dad, get ready to retire. Your son's going to come and retire you out very soon. Give me six months. I just ripped through this demo account, took 5,000 to 50 million. Don't worry. We're going to be rolling in the money soon, right? Everybody, we've all, had, we've all gone through that bullshit phase. It's just not realistic, right? You have to have active goals of your starting point how you're going to be potentially looking to increase your account uh, capital, whether you're focusing on percent, uh, percent gains, whether you're focusing on monetary gains. And that has to have actionable short-term goals that build up steps to your long-term vision that have to be realistic, attainable, and you can actively take action on it. Does that make sense to everybody? So, this is where it comes into play, where everybody's journey is going to be unique. Some people just want to supplement their income. They love the job they work, the career path they chose to go down. And trading is more of a side hustle, more of a side income that they're trying to build in. Some people want to be full-time traders. Like I just talked about the example of um, wanting to sustain themselves through full-time trading. They want the freedom. They don't want a boss. They don't want to make a copious amount of money. They just want to be able to sustain their way of life, maybe increase their quality of life through trading. Some people want big money wealth. Some people want financial freedom money, be able to buy any car you want, go on any vacation you want. Well, okay, your goals, your vision, I'm not one to judge. You guys can dream about whatever you want, but your plan of action has to be in relation to that vision. It has to be realistic. So for an example, somebody who wants to supplement their income and learn about trading, if they're putting in the uh, required time and effort, they don't really need to be um, looking at some long-term five to 10 year plan. They could easily, with the potential of disposable income, deposit five to 10 K start to learn the ins and outs of trading, have a strict trading plan that they're following and easily be able to make a few hundred, few thousand dollars a month to supplement their income on top of their career. 
But if somebody else has a goal of achieving long-term wealth, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars being pulled out of the market, you can't have that same short timeline compared to somebody who just wants to supplement their income or somebody who's trying to make some more short-term money or somebody who's trying to just be a full-time trader in terms of just um, paying their cost of living. They don't have these huge goals. You're going to have to have that 10, 20, 30 year plan to be involved in the market to really go your uh, to really grow your day trading skill, move that capital into investments, have that money working for you. These are long-term financial plans and a process that you have to be going through to achieve that vision. It's not an overnight process, right? If you don't go through this process of translating your vision into a plan, translating that plan and integrating it with proper financial risk management and financial planning, your, your probability of success is going to be even lower than it already is where 90% of traders already lose, right? But through this webinar, we're primarily talking about um, more um, zooming in and talking about a lot of the risk management for day trading. But regardless, you still have to understand your vision, what you're looking to get out of the market and adapt a plan to that accordingly, okay? So... For me to keep it really simple, remember, every single presentation I do is from my perspective, my experience. There's more than two ways to risk manage day trading, right? There's hedging methods. There's market correlation methods. There's, there's tons of different ways that people um, manage risk while day trading, right? Or while investing, scalping, whatever it may be. But through my experience, for the majority of retail traders, I primarily see two types of day trading, okay? And two types of risk management for day trading. So to keep things simple, there are generally two ways for manual retail traders to profit using risk management dependent on their trading system, preference, and style. I personally stick to a higher risk versus reward ratio focus, which allows, for, which allows more room for human error and realistic expectations. Social media advertises the high win rate type as it's more visually appealing. It's more appealing to the ego. It's more appealing for advertising. It's more appealing for sales. People get more impressed by it, but it's less humanly applicable due to emotions, right? So number one, a high strike in win rate. A high win rate means you must win the majority percentage of your trades to be profitable, or it means your trading system's profitability is dependent on a high win rate of win percentage. This is a lot of the people that you see who take one-to-one -one risk versus reward ratio trades. Meaning if you're putting in $10 risk to the market, you're looking to get $10 profit. It's a one-to-one -one risk versus reward. To actively be making profit long-term with a one-to-one -one risk versus reward, a one-to-one point five risk versus reward, even a one-to-two risk versus reward, you need a high str a strike rate, a high win rate, right? When you're looking at the numbers, you can say, okay, well, I can win 70%, 80%, 90% of trades if like my analysis plays out perfectly and I get this good execution. Yeah, sure. But when it comes to actual uh, application due to human emotions, human psychology, it is not as applicable, right? So a high win rate means you must win the majority percentage of your trades to be profitable or it means your trading system's profitability is dependent on a high rate of win percentage. This is what is actively shown on social media. 90% win rate, 85% win rate, 100% win rate. We don't lose, I don't take L's, right? This is what is actively shown on social media as it is very visually appealing to sell signals or courses, but it's not actually applicable when it comes to human emotions. Market losses are inevitable and hard to deal with for the most. Most people cannot sustain a high win rate due to the pressure to perform, not handling a loss well, emotions, mistakes, and more, right? We got, uh, I know it's Sunday afternoon, markets aren't even open yet. People are busy enjoying their weekend during this time of the webinar. We got 30 people in here right now. 
how many of us, when we first started trading, were trying to be heroes, go on a five win streak, 10 win streak, and you were on a win streak. You'd be feeling hot, dopamine rushing, feeling unstoppable. But then how many of you end up crashing your account on one loss you couldn't ac accept or two losses you couldn't accept where you start to double down, move your stop loss, not close in a trade managed loss, right? We've all been there. This is that, this is the fault in the high strike in win rate chasing that's advertised on social media. It's not, it, people lose in life, losing, making mistakes, emotional errors. That's normal, right? Trying to go on a huge win streak, it can cause a lot of pressure to perform. When you finally take a loss at the end of the win streak, it can be very, it can be very hard to accept that loss. You were just on such a big high. You were on top of the world. Nothing could stop you. And now you can't accept this one loss. You move your stop loss. You completely throw risk management out the window. In my opinion, chasing a high strike and win rate will eventually have a higher probability of when you hit an inevitable loss, that emotions will come into play and your risk, manage will, your risk management will be thrown out the window. Right? We've been there before. Yeah, you, you start to... You start to marry your bias, remove your stop loss, double down, deposit more, and price keeps going against you, wiping out all your profit, wiping out more of your capital that you deposited. And then you're, you went from being at the top of the hill, top of the, top of the world, all the way back down, feeling like a bum. You know why I can say this? Because I've been there too. I've been trading five years now. I've gone through that $50,000 of loss through my first two years. It's not like I just lost the 50K. I'd be on huge win streaks, doubling accounts, crash it, lose, be on a win streak, crash it, lose. Going, going through this whole, this whole teeter-totter of, of account growth and also emotional stress and imbalance, right? And at the end of the day, we are humans. That's going to weigh on your mentality, okay? You guys have seen that psychology webinar where I show you guys my monthly slips, where I show you guys the wins and losses. You see half of them are losses. How am I still profiting so well? How am I still making money? If 50% of my trades, like overall trade positions end up in a loss. Social media says you need a 90% win rate. All these marketers, they're showing they never lose. All their signals are wins. How come when I try to follow the markers, when I try to follow social media, my account crashes? Because that's all a facade. That's all a mirage. That's all this is bullshit. And the, and the experiences we're talking about that we can relate to, right? But focusing on a higher risk versus reward ratio. This is where the money's made, okay? And I'll tell you guys a story that I talk about in other webinars as well. That's not about me. It's just about manual retail traders back in the day. So high risk versus reward ratio. Focusing on a positive risk versus reward ratio is more realistic and applicable, but not as visually appealing, not as satisfying for your ego. But who the fuck cares if it looks good visually? Who the fuck cares if your ego feels satisfied? It's all about making money and profiting at the end of the day. That's what you're really trying to do. You're not trying to show something off cool to social media, or your friends, that stuff's short lived. And, and nobody really cares about what other people are doing. You might send a like here and there. You might scroll someone's picture. You might say, oh, cool. This marketer got a Lambo. But who really gives a shit when we should be focusing on our lives, right? So focusing on a positive risk versus reward ratio is more realistic and applicable, but not as visually appealing, not as appealing for the human ego. This allows room for human error, losses and mistakes, as, you, as if you only enter trades into the market with a positive risk versus reward ratio, your winning trades will mask your losing trades in size with at least a 50% win rate. Meaning if you focus on a one to three risk versus reward, if you're scalping and, you're, and you have the, uh, if you're scalping, you're going for like a five to seven pip, 10 pip stop loss, for 15, 20, 30 pip gain. If you're intraday trading, you're going for like a 20, 30, 40 pip stop loss 
for a 60, 80, 100 pip gain, whatever it may be, swings even larger, right? This means that if you're putting $10 risk into the market, you're looking for a minimum $30 return. You're trying to triple the risk you're putting into the market. So if you focus on a one to three risk versus reward ratio, in a stretch of 10 trades, if you're actually accepting your losses at the one ratio of loss and removing your wins at the three ratio of a win, sure, you can let other uh, positions continue to extend risk-free, move your stop loss and trail it. We'll talk about that in a second. But we're talking about very basics. If you're accepting your stop losses at one, we'll say 10 pips, and you're accepting your wins at 30 pips, in a stretch of 10 trades, you can lose five trades and still be very profitable, right? I talk about this in many of the educational webinars in more detail. So what does this do for you mentally and from a financial perspective? This puts more focus on the probabilities of trading. Less pressure to perform allows room for error and more logic. You're still following pre-planned trade ideas. You're still identifying opportunity in the market first where you can risk one potential to make three, whatever that is in relation to your uh, financial risk you're looking to put into the market. And over a stretch of 10 trades, you know in the back of your head based on math, based on probabilities, that even if you lose five trades and five of your trade ideas are incorrect, or you had poor execution, or you made an emotional mistake, that as long as you're still following your risk management plan and trade managing at the one, or even less, sometimes you can trade manage for even less of a loss, that the other five wins in that stretch of the 10 trades is still going to heavily mask your losses, be triple the size of the losses. By the end of the stretch of the 10 trades, you're profiting. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? So in my opinion, when you focus on a higher risk versus reward ratio, there's a lot more positives that are actually applicable to human emotions and psychology. One, you focus more on the probabilities. Two, you focus more on the actual math of, of your wins and losses and how your wins outweigh your losses to have you still profit. Three, this gives you room for error. You know, in a stretch of 10 trades, as long as you're focusing on this positive RR, you can risk losing 50%. You can risk losing 40% of your trades. You can even risk losing 60% of your trades the higher your RR is. Right? This allows for better control of losses compared to trying to focus on being on a heavy win streak, trying to never take a loss. In this situation, you understand losses are inevitable. You understand sometimes your trade idea could be great, but your execution was poor, or you missed the opportunity, or you entered a bit too late, or a fundamental event came in and pushed it against you. It happens. You stay a lot more logical. You stay a lot more emotionally neutral. You focus more on the, on the math and probability side of it. Right? So now tools for trade management for us as retail traders. The first one, long-term planning and intraday planning. I forgot to include there. Long-term planning allows you to create actionable and achievable, achievable capital growth goals based on monetary or percent value. You can't, you can't start to take steps towards your vision if you don't have a plan on how to get there, right? Most people say they want to make a lot of money, but then they're just there wandering in this open ocean without a boat, without any direction, without a compass, without no way to go. They just jumped in there. You're asking to fail, right? Stop losses. Stop losses are used to invalidate a trade setup and should be used for every trading style. Not using a stop loss shows you have not planned a risk versus reward scenario or calculated what you are willing to lose before a trade. Because at the end of the day, losses are inevitable. If you don't put an active stop loss, it means you're not planning to see what your risk versus reward gain was. So there's no actual risk management there. It means you're not having any pre-planned trade idea you're following, where a pre-planned trade idea should have confirmation bias on both 
what are reasons to extend a trade, hold the trade, continue to let your profit grow, or also the same understanding when you set up a trade idea is where uh, is what price point of interest is your trade no longer valid? What fundamental catalyst makes your trade no longer valid? Right? So using a stop loss is very important. I have issues with the take profit. I usually manually close, but still stick to a one to three risk versus reward with the experience I've developed. But even I need to still develop using the take profit more effectively. But the stop loss, this, because remember, what's rule number one of risk management? Protecting capital, right? Learning how to survive in the markets. That's the stop loss. Okay. Take profit. Take profits are set based on the potential reward you are looking to achieve out of a trade setup and pre-planned trade idea. In my opinion, you should not even enter a trade if you have not spotted an opportunity that net gains more than you risk in. Meaning I personally do not support the whole one-to-one -one risk versus reward ratio trading. I don't see the fucking point in these extremely risky and dangerous markets to be putting in $10 to make $10 with the potential to lose the $10 you put in. Does that make sense to everybody? I want to at least be doubling the risk I'm putting in in a potential profit, tripling it, quadrupling it, five times in it, depending on the trade setup and opportunity. So your analysis, your trade setups and opportunity, your potential take profit goals, you shouldn't even be entering a trade if you don't, if you don't see the opportunity to do more than a one-to-one -one risk versus reward ratio. Right. Trade management. This is the active supervision of executed trades following pre-planned analysis with the goals of protecting capital or extending slash securing profits, depending on market conditions and confirmation bias. Two steps to trade management to keep it very simple. One, protect your capital. If your trade idea based on fundamental or technical is removing your confidence, this is when you can intervene to close earlier, prevent any loss or further loss, set break even, close partials and more. Remember, if you have a one to three risk versus reward you are focusing on, it doesn't mean you always have to accept for the example, let's just say the one to three risk versus reward is for a scalper who's going for 10 pip stop loss on gold for 30 pip take profit, right? Depending on the market conditions, your experience and your pre-planned analysis, if you start to see various events, whether it's technical based on the price action or a fundamental economic event or news headline that starts to, that starts to intervene or go against your bias, starts to make you lose your confidence in the trade, this is when you can step in and start to trade manage and not, not take a full loss. If you're in profit and start and price starts to reverse against you and you're no longer confident in the trade, you're no longer um, seeing the favorable conditions to extend your trade or see it in profit again, you can close that break even and take even a smaller loss than your pre-planned loss. This is trade management. Or you can protect your capital even in the sense of uh, setting trailing stop losses. Like you could be in a scalp, you're in profit for 10 pips, you're not liking the condition still and, and how favorable it is towards your bias, you set your break even at five pips in. So you could still get potential profit, cover your spread, cover the commission, take no loss at all. And if it continues to your take profit, that's fine. If it takes you out at the five pip stop loss, it's better than a loss. You still made some pips in terms of gains and you walk away to trade another day, right? So number one is always protecting of capital. So various trade management steps of setting your stop loss at break even, closing earlier, closing some partials, setting a trailing stop loss and so forth, okay? Or number two, extending profits. If your trade idea based on fundamentals and technicals is showing more promise, right? Volume or volatility starts to increase in your favor more than you expected. You start to break above zones a lot easier, smooth as butter, smooth as butter, very minimal ranging. The fundamentals are in your play. Hey, if you're already in the executed position, 
move your stop losses and trail them. Close some partials and extend your next take profit. Leave your runners going risk-free. Why not? You're, as manual retail traders, our job is to stay adaptive to the markets. Sometimes we have a trade idea playing out and it smashes your take profit area. And you know you could have held it longer based on the price action. And sometimes you wish you held it longer. Well, if you set your stop loss at break even or trailing to still, to, to still secure at a potential favorable amount, then you have less stress, less worry to see if price action and the fundamentals can still continue in your favor, right? So this is the active supervision of executed trades following pre-planned analysis with the goals of protecting capital or extending and securing profits depending on the market conditions and your confirmation bias, which of course comes from your pre-planned analysis and understanding of the market, staying adaptive. So risk management summary points. One, goals turn to plans. Turning a financial vision into an actionable plan with financial risk management integrated on how to attain those goals. Two, the use of tools. Use of active trade idea planning. Risk versus reward benefiting opportunities. Stop losses, take profits, active trade management, and more. Three, in my opinion, focus on risk versus reward allows for more, allows for room for human error, more emotional control, realistic and applicable versus a high win rate pressure to perform type of style. Lastly, focus on probabilities, looking at the market as planned opportunities, probabilities of winning and losing and risk management allows for a realistic approach and a higher chance of keeping emotions controlled. All right, everybody. So thanks for watching. Please use this basics webinar and presentation alongside other Capital Hungry educational webinars on financial psychology and risk management techniques. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy these presentations. Hopefully you guys enjoy these webinars. I'm going to save and upload this. I'll see you all later for the weekly recap.